Welcome. This is Manal of Lutheran Church, Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. It's good to have you joining us for our Sunday service. We will begin with our first hymn. to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in His hands. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His, for He made it, and His hand formed a dry land. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. 
blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. The Old Testament reading for today comes from Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will, be, will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle for today comes from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in the one spirit to the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel for today comes from St. Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that he had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion in them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. 
And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let's talk a little bit about some aspects of the Gospel for today, Mark chapter 6, where we see Jesus feeding 5,000 men, perhaps 15 to 20,000 people, including the families. One of the things is that Jesus is feeding the body. Usually we think about Jesus feeding our soul, our heart, with His spiritual food. But here is one of the episodes where He cares also about the body needs. So he brings fish and loaves to very healthy options for our body. The other thing that needs to be always right off the bat noted here and never evaded from is that this is a miracle. Five loaves and two fish fed thousands of people. 
Sometimes you may find people trying to explain Jesus' miracles away in a rationalistic point of view, like when he walked over the water, there was a hidden like stone path that he knew there, or other ways of trying to explain Jesus' miracle so it may fit our mind. This is what we are doing when, when we try to, again, evade the fact that this is a miracle performed by Jesus and try to make things, because we don't understand otherwise, to fit the way we can understand them. That's reducing the, the greatness of the Son of God to the size of our own brain. As the disciples brought it to Him, Jesus gave thanks and multiplied the food for everybody there. It is a miracle performed by the Savior. And why would he bother to do that? There were thousands of people there. His schedule was jam-packed. He had lots of things to do. He barely would find time to eat himself. He might as well give him an excuse and say, you know guys, you know, have another appointment and tomorrow is a busy day. This weekend looks like crazy. So go home, look after yourselves. You guys, you are heads of the families. You should provide for your families. Goodbye, see you next time. This is not what he does, because Jesus was completely bound to his mission and to his people. He was completely bound to them to help them, and in that occasion, he decided to help them even with their physical needs. I once visited the family to bring them some help and learned as I talked to them that two days before I was there, they were completely desperate. They had no food for them and for the kids. When you see a family in a situation in physical need, what do you do? And when you see someone in spiritual or mental ignorance or deficiency, would you just confirm it to them? Or would your heart be touched and you'd feel compelled to help promoting compassion to the body and teaching to the soul? Saint Mark tells us that Jesus saw all those people as a sheep without a shepherd. Would he just turn his back and say, well, you get what you attract, you know? If they are in this situation, that's possibly because they are attracting this into their lives by the way they act or the way they're feeling. That's their destiny or something like that. No, Jesus taught them, healed them, and fed them. He cares for them, bringing them to the gospel. And that's how you strengthen people. A life dedicated to grow in the knowledge of God's will. That's why, how you really help people. When you can help them in their bodily and physical needs, but also and especially help them in this, their spiritual needs. And as we know from the reading, Jesus provided them with the food for their soul. That the other type of food that they needed. They needed food for their hearts. To feed their souls. Food for faith. That's the business Jesus was in. That's the business we are in. We can and should help people in many different ways, promoting compassion and care. But our ultimate business is something no one else would do, neither government, neither social institutions or food banks, is to bring solid and consistent food for faith, food that is able to sustain them lifelong. At which tables have we been sitting? Of course, this table here at church. But what happens when you sit down and have a very healthy lunch, but for supper you bombard your blood flow with fries, saturated food, and extra portions of salt? Jesus is promising and proposing spiritual healthy food that nourishes life in us. A good word can carry a person through a long and difficult time. Now imagine what the good word can do for you through all the many difficult times we have to go in life. And how do we, we receive that food? We receive by hearing, by understanding through faith, and by being nurtured by His Word. That's why we listen to Jesus and to Jesus alone. He is the only one who has the healthy food for our faith, the food that we need. There are basically three types of food we take in life. The food we eat, the food we long for, and the food we actually need. Were those people asked what they would like to have on that day, would they have chosen broccoli and asparagus, a rhubarb donut with seeds of soy, things like that? I don't think so. They might have 
had all sorts of different preferences according to their will. Their will. Jesus might even had had a survey asking, go and ask people what they want to have. He was up to do a miracle, you know. He might as well impress them, have everybody content with anything they wished to have. But he gives them fish and loaves, the basic food that they needed for their body at that point. You could sometimes argue, some people say that bread is not as healthy, depending on the bread and so forth. Here's where the illustration breaks. Christ is the one who can provide the bread for life. With our own hands, all we do is a menu full of sweet tasting treats that are all ill-generating goods for our hearts. Jesus gives people the food they need. If what we need and what we like come together, that's the best of both, both worlds. But we need to be aware that God's food for soul, as opposed to so many things we see around that are so sweet to our eyes and ears, but completely dangerous to our hearts, sometimes may, God's food may be bitter in our mouth, but perfectly healthy for our hearts. Life is short. We hear that all the time. From the doctors, we hear also that it can be shorter if you eat unhealthy food. The same is valid for our spiritual life, which is the most important. If ingredients from the creation can nurture us so well, like fish and loaves, talk about the words of the Creator Himself. He brings us in His means of grace what we need for our soul, bringing us bringing to us the whole life we need and generating care and compassion in us for others. He brings to us the food we need. Amen. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to the liver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants 
whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted, let me never be confounded. We gather now together our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts and our return to you. We pray that by them more people would come to know Christ Jesus and have their faith and hope and trust in Him. In His name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your compassion shown in Christ Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and the righteous son of David. Keep us trusting at all times in your right hand, in whom true satisfaction is found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have built one holy church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ himself as our cornerstone. Grant unity to your church on earth through the work of your Spirit, and the faithful proclamation of Christ's reconciling cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have brought us from many families into the household of God, and we ask you to continue to bless all Christian homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your constant care and all we need to support this body and life. Attend in mercy to those in need among us, Free them from dismay and fear by the certain certainty that Christ is their righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. To you. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us 
bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome back to Mount Olive. It's good to have you with us here in Regina, Saskatchewan, or in Canada, or even from different countries in the world. Your company is always very much welcome. July the 18th marks the Sunday today where our congregation is reopening to many of the activities we had before the pandemic uh, time here for Sunday services and other things that will come up in the fall. So if you want to know exactly in detail what is uh, open, reopening right now, what are the things that we are doing right now, and the ones that will be held for a later date, perhaps for the fall, you can go online to our website, monolive.ca, on our Facebook page as well. We will keep posting the updates on what is going on in the congregation as we are all happy to go slowly back to our normal life in our family, in our households, but especially here too at the church. God's blessings to you and I'll see you next time.